Hello everyone, greetings from Rio Alto, Panama. I'm in my hotel, you can't see out the window behind me, but that's the Pacific Ocean out there. I arrived safely today, Tuesday, April 20th, 2021. And it's evening now, so I'm going to catch up with my Deuteronomy study, chapter 16 so that we don't miss anything. Deuteronomy 16, verse number one. Observe the month of Abib and celebrate the Passover of the Lord your God, because in the month of Abib he brought you out of Egypt by night. Sacrifice as the Passover to the Lord your God, an animal from your flock or herd at the place the Lord will choose as a dwelling for his name. Do not cut it with bread, see, excuse me, do not eat it with bread made with yeast, but for seven days eat unleavened bread, the bread of affliction, because you left Egypt in haste, so that all the days of your life you may remember the time of your departure from Egypt. Let no yeast be found in your possession in all your land for seven days. Do not let any of the meat you sacrifice on the evening of the first day remain until morning. So this is the reminder of the Passover, the deliverance from Egypt by the mighty hand of God in the month of Abib. And they were to celebrate this every year to uh, sacrificing an animal uh, in the place the Lord will choose, uh, ended up being Jerusalem in the future. And they weren't supposed to eat bread made with yeast, only unleavened bread. And the, the scripture here calls it the bread of affliction because they left Egypt in haste. And that they should remember, that keyword remember, that the day they left Egypt. No yeast, no leaven for seven days. And... They had to eat, eat up all, all of that sacrifice that very, that very day. So we have this reminder of, of the Passover, which, which certainly has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's the Passover lamb who died at the time of that Passover feast. And uh, so the, the remembrance now for us, New Covenant people, is to remember what Jesus has done. It's still a need to remember our deliverance, but we remember our deliverance not by the law, but in Jesus Christ. He is our deliverer, and we remember his body and his blood. Verse number five, you must not sacrifice the Passover in any town the Lord your God gives you, except in the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. There you must sacrifice the Passover in the evening, when the sun goes down, on the anniversary of your departure from Egypt. So it was a, a yearly thing, an annual, an annual celebration. In the evening they sacrifice, were to sacrifice the animal when the sun goes down. Roast it and eat it at the place the Lord your God will choose. Then in the morning, return to your tents for six days, eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day, hold an assembly to the Lord your God and do no work. So that's the Passover festival or feast that lasted uh, seven days. Then there, were, there was the Feast of Weeks, verse 9. Count off seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain and then celebrate the Feast of Weeks to, to the Lord your God by giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessings the Lord your God has given you. And rejoice before the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. Again, referring to the future Jerusalem. You and your sons and your daughters, your Men servants, your maid servants, the Levites in your towns, and, and the aliens, the fatherless, and the widows living among you. Remember 
that you were slaves in Egypt and followed carefully these decrees. So it's another remembrance of their deliverance from Egypt. So seven weeks from the time they put the sickle to the standing grain, it was called the Feast of Weeks. And this was a, one, of the main, one of the main holidays. And they were to bring an offering according to their blessings. Verse 13, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your feast, you and your sons and your daughters, your men servants, maid servants, and the Levites and the aliens, the fatherless and the widows who live in your town. Same kind of instruction for each feast. For seven days, celebrate the feast of the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all the work of your hands, and your joy will be complete. So that's the Feast of Tabernacles. So he's telling him, verse six, telling verse 16, three times a year all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose. That ended up being Jerusalem. At the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. No man should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. So he gave them three celebrations or feasts or holidays that all of them were to attend every year. And we read in the earlier chapter that they would actually use, set aside money to pay for this so that their family, they and their family could enjoy the trip uh, back and forth. And while they're celebrating their food and their housing while they stay in Jerusalem. Verse 18, appoint judges and officials for every, each of your tribes and every town the Lord your God is giving you. And they shall judge the people fairly. Do not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. Follow justice and justice alone, so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. So here's an exhortation to appoint judges and officials from each tribe in all the different towns so that there would be fair and righteous judgment. They were never to, to twist or pervert justice or be partial with anyone. And don't accept bribes. It blinds you and, and changes everything so that you're influenced by that bribe. Follow justice and justice alone. Wouldn't that be refreshing if we had that going on in our nations? Finally, verses 21 and 22. Do not set up any wooden Asherah pole beside the altar you build for the Lord your God. And do not erect a sacred stone for these the Lord your God hates. So another exhortation against idolatry. Don't allow any symbol of idolatry to be where you worship the Lord your God. This is a short lesson today. I'm, I'm just trying to catch up on chapter 16, and we'll go on from here tomorrow. I'm going to do some short videos while I'm in Panama instead of the longer ones because it will take time to upload. So there's chapter, there's chapter 16 talking about the major feasts that all the, the people had to attend every year and also about righteous judges and avoiding idolatry. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you keep us in your way as we seek your face. If we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. Your hand is upon us, Lord, as we look to you in faith. And we're trusting you this day to bless and keep us and make us strong and have your way among us. We want your will to be done. That's the only important thing, that you are glorified and you are pleased with our walk. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so when you see this, this is going to be from YouTube. It's not Facebook Live. I'll put it on Facebook, but you can share the, the videos anyway with the link I'm going to put on Facebook from YouTube. God bless you. Please pray for me here in Panama. We'll see you tomorrow.